Today we have an exciting day because we are going to do some mods to this golf cart here. We're going to upgrade the batteries in it to some LiPo batteries and we're going to see what that does for the overall top speed of this cart. And we're also going to talk about this up here. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we have some solar panels on top of the golf cart that will continually charge this golf cart while we're driving around or it's sitting in the sun. So the rack system that we built here is a pretty simple design. We just have a two by four that runs along here and also over here. And then we just put a couple of screws from the bottom side into the two by four to hold it. And then the two by four just has a, a one by three that runs all the way around the perimeter of the frame just to hold the solar panels in place. And then on top, we use some wood screws with a big fender washer to hold the panels down in place. You can see another one there. We did one at every corner so that one screw holds down two panels each. All right, so here is the mess that we have underneath here. We're gonna pull out all these batteries and then uh, drop in the new batteries. We're only gonna have four batteries instead of the six batteries that are currently in here because the batteries that we're putting in are 12 volt batteries, not eight volt batteries. And then you'll see over here, we have our charge controller tucked in away, and we'll talk about that in a little bit and how that works with the panels. Now, when you're sourcing the panels, you wanna make sure that if you're running a 48 volt golf cart, that if you're running LiPo batteries, especially, you're gonna need your voltage on your panels to be close to 60 volts or above in order to be able to charge the batteries because the LiPo batteries run at a little bit higher volts than the 12 volt battery. And if you wanna be able to charge them to a full charge, it has to be at 60 volts or more in order to get the full charge. So I'll put a link in the description for these panels. These panels fit perfectly on this cart. They were the exact right width and they were just a little bit long in the back, but that works out great because it just added a little more of an awning over the back. So when the kids are on the back, they get a little more shade. The batteries we decided to go with for this cart build out is the Lion Energy batteries. And a couple of deciding factors went into that. One, the main one being is these are pretty much the only batteries on the market that have 150 amp output rating. Almost every other LiPo battery on the market, their maximum amperage output is 100 amp. I wanted the extra amperage because eventually we want to update the electronics on this, the motor and the controller on it which will significantly increase the amount of amperage that it can draw. So we went with these just because they can handle more. And um, the other factor of these, they're, they're quite a bit more than the Trojan batteries, but they're gonna last a lot longer. They have a lifetime warranty on these batteries where your Trojan batteries are good for maybe four or five years. These are gonna last for decades. And in the long run, we will be saving money by putting these batteries in. So the next step we're gonna do here is we're gonna start gutting this machine and taking all the old parts out. And we're gonna replace all the batteries and all of the connecting uh, cables because it looks like the connecting cables are about an eight, maybe a six gauge cable. We're gonna bump them up to a two gauge cable so that they can handle higher amperage when we do the mods down the road. As you can see, we got the batteries out. This one was so corroded that the cable actually broke off. So that's another plus about the LiPo batteries is you don't have to worry about all the acid corroding out the connections because that's that doesn't happen on a LiPo battery. There is no battery acid. Another thing is you probably notice I'm a little bit winded. Those batteries are heavy. All four of the LiPo batteries that we're putting in weigh as much as probably three of the batteries that were in here. So we're cutting our weight down by half. I think it's actually a little less than half. Not only are we gonna have more storage power, but we've significantly slashed our weight and we'll have increased the amount of room in here. We will only use half of this tray uh, for batteries instead of using almost the entire thing. All right, next step is I'm gonna get the batteries unpackaged and we'll start dropping them in. We decided to get the more slightly more expensive ones that have the heat pad with them so that if you're, you can use these batteries in the winter time when it's colder. I do intend on putting some bigger, beefier tires on here so we can use it in the winter time when there isn't a ton of snow. These heat pads are pretty simple to put on. You just simply stick them right to the front in the middle wrap it around the side, and then this just comes around the top, and you pull off the 3M 
sticker and every single one of them did not come off easy. So you gotta use a knife to pop it off, which means it's very sticky and hopefully will never come off. And then we just stick that right there. And then these will get hooked up to the battery when we hook up the cables to the battery. And then this is your switch to be able to turn the heater on and off. And then they give you these nifty little thermal bags for them to help keep them warmer when you got the heat pad running. So we have all the batteries in, and I don't know if I've mentioned this before or not, but man, they are so much lighter than the other batteries. And I may have exaggerated a little bit in saying that they were little, they were less than half. They're probably less than a third of the weight of the other batteries. I mean, they are so light compared to the other ones. So one of the other things I really like about the Lion Energy batteries is they give you a set of wing nuts to go on here wing bolts, whatever you want to call these. They give you a long set and a short set. So if you've got a lot of wires that you need to connect to them, you can use either the long bolts if you have just a few wires and you use the short ones. If you have the clamp style uh, connectors, that's what these are for, but we don't. So we're going to remove all these. They're pretty straightforward, easy to remove. And then we're going to go ahead and start hooking up our wiring harness. Now, whenever I install batteries, I like to hook them up with a quick connect so that I can easily take these batteries out for winter storage. If I want to throw these batteries in the in the boat, use them with the, with the uh, trolling motor or whatever it be, I can just quickly unplug and take them out. So I usually do the one heavy duty one, which is your um, main use, and then also a smaller light duty one, which I use for charging. So these will just simply go onto the terminals and then we'll also hook up these wires at the same time. Now whenever I hook up the wires I like to point them towards the opposite side center of the battery. That gives you the most flexibility with the cord that you have left over and just makes it easier to position them however you need them positioned to hook them up. Alright I'm going to finish hooking up all the wires to the batteries and then I'm going to show you how we hook up these connectors so as you can see, I got all the wires hooked up now and we're working on putting in the clamps for the batteries. And because these batteries are a little bit shorter, we had to make some slight modifications. So we just cut um, this part out right here. So we cut right here and then we cut in from here just so that this would sit lower on this bar and actually build a clamp down on the battery. So here is one that I have not modified. You can see we just simply cut this part out and then this would just set back in there and uh, it'll build a clamp onto the battery and hold it securely. These cords here, or these wires here, are for the AC charger that came with the golf cart, but the one that I got with this golf cart was shot, and so we no longer use them, and that is why we did the solar panels instead. Now, if for whatever reason the solar panels aren't able to keep up, which has not been the case all summer long, the kids have been driving it endlessly, day in, day out, and have never had a dead battery with this setup because the solar panels are enough to maintain the batteries. But in the event that you would need to charge it, you could still hook up a charger to these ports and charge each one of these batteries individually. Now you won't be able to charge them all at the same time be unless you have a 48 volt charger, which you could then use that. So to hook this up to my charge controller, I simply made this wiring harness here. It's just a negative wire goes in here, it comes out of here, goes into this one, goes in, goes out, goes in, goes out, and this gives us the uh, positive wire, and so then you have a positive wire here at the very end, so what you end, you end up with is a negative and a positive wire. This gives you the um, four batteries in series, which gives you 48 volts at these points here. Now, you can then put a connector on the end of here and charge it and charge all your batteries at the same time if you have a 48 volt charger. I am not going to do that. We're going to hook these two wires directly to the charge controller and these will go to the batteries to hook them all into um, series. All right, so now we're going to hook up these wires. The first thing that we want to do is we want to hook these up to the charge controller so that when we get all the batteries hooked up to the connectors, these aren't sitting around hot and run the risk of shorting out. So. I'm going to grab the charge controller here. This is just a charge controller that I had sitting around. It used to be on our camper that we no longer own, but I took it out before we sold it. So that's what we're using. I'll put a link in the description for a little bit more affordable option charge controller that will work with this same setup. 
All right, so now that we have it hooked up to the charge controller, we can go ahead and hook up the connectors to the batteries. Now, I can't stress enough, you gotta make sure that you hook up the batteries in the same exact order uh, every time because if you get them screwed, mixed up, you're gonna make this battery connect to this battery and, and then that battery, you're gonna end up shorting stuff out. So you need to make sure that this battery goes to this battery, then this one, and then this one. When you do this connector and this connector, and it doesn't matter the order, just as long as you follow the same order when you connect the next um, connectors. All right, so now the MPT charger is connected and we are going to just make sure that we have it set to the right battery source. All right, so the charge controller is now hooked up. We set it to lithium batteries and now all that's left for the charge controller is just to simply hook up the uh, PV wires to the charge controller. So do that quick. All right, so one of the most important things when you're making your wiring harness is you wanna make sure that you always have, um, you know, your, you start out with your positive here, then you have your negative here. The negative of this connector needs to go to the positive of the next connector. So this one here, you can see we got negative to positive, and then we got negative to positive, and then we have negative here again to positive here and then we end up with a negative wire at the very end. If you do not hook them up this way, and you decide to hook a positive to a positive or a negative to a negative, you will not end up with 48 volts. And if you hook this wiring harness up, after you hook up this wiring harness, you will fry some wires. So you need to make sure that you double check that you have the wiring done in the right order. And then and the same goes with this wiring harness as well. You have your negative goes to the positive, positive goes to the negative, negative goes to the positive. So once you have double checked and verified that, the next step is to hook up your new wiring harness to your golf cart. So all of the connections for this wiring harness lead to the back here, to the controller. And so we're gonna just fish these wires through underneath here. And then we're going to go on the back side and hook them up to the controller. So if you look, here's the controller. There's a solenoid here, right here. On the right side of this solenoid is where the positive wire goes and then the negative wire comes in right here. It actually uh, pairs up into the same connector here. So we're just gonna snip the, the ground wire here, loosen up this bolt and then put the new wire on here. All right, so now that we have it all hooked up, we're gonna start in the same order as we do with this set of connectors. We had the hot wire go to this terminal here. So we're gonna grab this connector here and we're gonna hook up our hot wire connector here. And then we're gonna to go to the next one and just work our way around the battery bank. And if we did this correctly, we shouldn't have any smoke. All right, everything seems to be all right. I'm gonna go ahead and put the key in. See, clicked, it turned on. It moves, so everything appears to be working properly. So we're gonna go ahead and mount the charge controller inside of here and put the back cover back on to the golf cart. And if we mount the charge controller on the side here, you have plenty of room. You could put a box in here and, and have it be a storage area for tools. You could put a small cooler in here, whatever you want. It just opens up more space for storage in this uh, unit. So one of the things I forgot to mention earlier is anytime that you put batteries in series, it's always a good idea to charge them up to a 100% charge each individually before you hook them all together and charge them. Most manufacturers recommend doing that. It's the only way to ensure that they will all get to a maximum charge level and stay at the same state of charge. So I let this sit on the charger overnight and charged each one of the batteries individually and now we're ready to go and do the test run and see if it made any difference on the top speed of the cart. So unlike what other people have reported that after putting the LiPo batteries in, the extra voltage that you get with the LiPo batteries, 
it did not seem to increase the speed of my cart however the one thing i did notice is it does not slow down going up the hills that it did before so before it would slow down to 10 to 11 miles an hour going up a gradual hill and we held true at 12 miles an hour with the new batteries in so that is a win for us so the next upgrade we are going to do is we're going to get one of the uh, navitas i think is how you say it controllers and install that to the cart that should give us what we're looking for I wanted to get this cart reprogrammed by the dealer, but they said that it was gonna cost me about 300 bucks for them to reprogram the controller so that I could be able to do 22 miles an hour approximately. And um, I just can't justify spending $300 for them to program it when I can buy the Navitas controller. That'll be this winter project. We're gonna upgrade that, uh, hopefully speed up the cart some more. If you like this video, please pound that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you get a notification every time that we post a new video. And we'll see you in the next one.